The following podcast is sponsored by Bunder and Press. Bunder and Press is a Canadian publisher of quality science fiction titles, including this month's releases of Duatro by Brad C. Anderson, The Dark Corridor by Jennifer Ron, and The Sixth Helix by Al Anya. Check there out there, these books and more at bunterandpress.ca. And by Adam Dries. Adam's latest released, Five Critical Things for Successful Book Science, is available now at Amazon, Kobo, and all other places you can get books electronically. And the physical release will be May 30th at Alice Next Books at 7 p.m. Be there. Welcome, everyone, to episode 260 of Just Joshing. I'm your host, Joshua Pentelaresco. I write stuff in podcast two today. My guest is returning after near, nearly 250 episodes away. Chuck Miller returns, and we have a wonderful conversation. Chuck's a cool dude, and we had to have a really good talk about things here. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. First things first, uh, my sponsors this month, tonight at Owl's Nest Books, Jennifer Ron, previous guests, Al Anya, are launching their books at Al's Nest Books at 7 p.m. tonight. You should definitely go check it out, number one. Number two, um, Strange Bedfellows and Five Critical Things are my giveaways for the week. Uh, Strange Bedfellows is political science fiction edited by Hayden Trenholm. Great book, lots of cool writers in it. Adam Dries' book. Five Critical Things for Successful Book Signings is I'm giving away another copy this week. Uh, if you want to enter, simply put your name, e- emails into the email list at the bottom. Uh, there will be a link. You just click on it, and we'll get right to it. Lots of cool things to talk about at the end of the podcast, and I will get to those at the end of the podcast. But for now, let's get into the interview, shall we? Okay, so we have officially turned the recorder on, Mr. Chuck. So if there's anything incriminating you like to say, make it look good. No, I, I'm not going to answer that question on the advice of my counsel. Yeah, that, that, that's a good answer. <laughs> that's a very good it's answer. Fifth Amendment, Fifth Amendment. Fifth Amendment, yeah. Well, in Canada, there is no Fifth Amendment, but that'll oh, say... Oh, well, you must have some. Well, eh... eh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys have a great constitution, but you guys don't seem to use it anymore. And we it's just no, it's it's just optional, and it's mostly ignored these days. Yeah, which is kind of sad because it's actually a really good law, legal system. They did, they did. But it is what it is, I guess. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. We we could we could debate what happened down there to get it to this point, but I yeah. I I don't think either of us have the alcohol. No. Uh, the, this uh, early in the morning. <laughs> I'm totally sober, so I'm not really qualified to, to get into that. Yeah, no, I I, I get you. So so we'll do we'll, we'll we'll do that another time. But I just want to say welcome back. It's been uh, yeah, a well, thank you. Yeah, it's been a while. It is. It's good to talk to you again. Yeah, I know, no problem. Um, so what have you been up to? I think we'll start there. I... No, go ahead. What you say? What have you been up to? What have I been up to? Well, I, I have been still writing, of course. I do that. Um, I have some more horror-related stuff, and I've been kind of getting into that. I did a uh, short story for an anthology that's coming out soon called Cthulhu 1816, The Year Without a Summer. Okay, that sounds fun. It, is, it has 12 stories, all of them set in a month during 1816 involved involving a his event from that year and tying it in somehow with the Cthulhu mythos. And uh, mine is July, and I do the uh, wreck of the French frigate Medusa, which was a very famous story because of the raft. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I'm, I'm not. Why don't, you, why don't you talk a little bit about it? Well, the, the French frigate Medusa ran aground off the coast of Africa, and um, they were stranded out there, and they built a raft. And, and so the people, the rich people, the governor of the colony and everything got away on their little the, their little boats that they had. And everybody else that was left behind had to, to make do with this raft, and it was just terrible. It was poorly constructed, and they were out drifting around for quite some time and eventually had to resort to cannibalism to stay alive. Oh. So it was a huge scandal, and it was a big story at the time. But anyway, so I did a story which ties it in with uh, the sunken city of Riley and, and Cthulhu cultists in Africa and, and things like that. 
See, it, it kind of feeds off your loves. Because one of the things we talked about last time is you like you loved using celebrities and other things from the past. And now you're just yeah, going deep. Yeah. So you're kind of going deeper into actual real history. I mean, you're adding, it, obviously, a little bit of flavor to it. But yeah. uh, you, 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 so have you become a little bit more immersed in history since we talked? Or has it, been, has it just been a... Uh, I, well, I've always, you know, been interested. And I've gotten into different things. Uh, when I first was given the the opportunity to do this story i didn't know much about the medusa and i read three or four books and got really in depth into it and i mean i could have done a novel out of that and and maybe one day i will but um it's a fascinating story and there's a lot more to it than i was able to go into in the uh in the story i did especially a sociological aspects of it because this was around the time when the french crown had been restored napoleon had been toppled from power and then come back again for a while then got knocked off again so the the backdrop against which all this happened is just very complex and really really interesting goes to show you that historically speaking politics are messed up no matter what era we get into well they always have been yeah no, it, it's it's definitely sounds like it sounds like you've been having fun at least. So, ju- is the horror thing become just more of a natural progression of where you are now? Well, I just you know I've been wanting to kind of branch out and do some different things than what I have been doing, and maybe you know some things that might find a little bit wider appeal. That's that's been a concern of mine lately. Ah, so so you figured hor- like and you like horror, so you figured just get. Getting- I do, yeah. So I've been wanting. Uh, I haven't, you know, really done much else. I'm doing something else for this publisher. It's Beyond Death Publishing is the name of the... Uh, it's a new outfit that's based in the UK that I did this Cthulhu story for, and I'm doing some other stuff for them that uh, I don't I don't have any time frame on when any of that will be out. But, but that, that's okay. No, it, it just sounds like you've been just... It's just been a, a progression. Writers, I find... We all we all are playing in new fields. Like I'm about to release my first science fiction novel later in the summer. Ah. Yeah, so I'm writing a story called The Cloud Diver. The idea mm-hmm. is the cloud today is going to be our archaeology tomorrow. So it has a Matrix meets Indiana. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a Matrix meets Indiana Jones kind of novel. Well, now that's a good idea. Yeah. Like yeah. Huh? I'm having, I had a lot of fun with it. One of my main characters is a unicorn that talks in wingdings. So that's yeah. A, yeah. Well, you gotta have fun, right? I, I think I think one of the things. See, I, I I've been thinking about like expanding audiences and stuff like that for a while, and one and one of the things I, I I've come to realize is, um, as writers, we pretty much um, you, we all have something to say, right? And, yeah. but the trick is understanding what it is you're actually saying. And I'm not talking about, like, the story concepts or the ideas, but, like, the stuff that really, really interests you, right? What is that? Like, what is that, um... Like, for me, like, I, like, for, I, like that novel is more about getting out of your comfort zone, about embracing the challenges of tomorrow and in fu- and future. And those, I think that's something that's universal, right? Um, yeah. But it's also something that... that that I'm realizing, like, that's what I'm saying. And this is the kind of, the kind of story I'm going to write that says this and talks about this. And I I, th- I think more than genre or, or, like, I think the secret to, to expanding your niche, one of, the, one of the secrets to it, is understanding who you are and who you aren't, right, as a yeah. person. Because yeah. that's, I mean, write, writing at the end of the day, as much as it is about telling stories, it's also about figuring out who we are and where we fit in the universe. Does that make sense? Yeah. And because the ideal is that you'll find the people out there will find you that are that that uh, will connect with that 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 are that it resonates with them that they're you know maybe it helps them with their journey or whatever that's what I would I'd, I like to think yeah absolutely so I'm going to ask you a tough I'm going to ask you a tough question Mr Chuck yeah all right what uh, what have you been trying to say for the last little bit but like what have you discovered in your writing about you. You know, that's interesting. I don't know. I, I, a lot of it, I think, is just expressing and trying to categorize and, and corral my confusion about life. 
uh, pulling things together that that don't seem to fit together. I don't know because everything is is part of the same continuum, and I don't really know what I'm saying. I'm no, uh, I'll, let, let, let's see if we can elaborate. That's you know, what happens when you ask a question like that. Well, well, well no, it, but it, it, these are good questions to really talk about and think about, yeah, right? Yeah, you're right. Right, so. Yeah. Like for example, like what you're talking about there. Do you know what the weirdest thing about the truth is? Like the absolute, like the truth. It's it, it doesn't have to make sense. Yeah, it, it, it really. I think if you're if you're going into something and trying to make make it make sense, make make everything be logical, it's not going to work because that's just not how things are. No, I mean, I mean, there, like, like, like you talked about, like that story there. I mean, that story is just messed up. Like, if you sit there and think yeah. about that, you couldn't make that up. Not in a million oh, years, no. right? But the thing about that is, you're kind of like going, all right. So if this is if this is the story, and if this is the uh, and but it, it's real. And how did that, yeah. how would that happen? Why would that happen? Uh, although I do feel like like with you, a big thing about you, from what I've noticed with your stuff, is you try to like you, like you say you try to make sense of it all. You like systems. Yeah. You like systems, and yeah, yeah, and not and, and this system called life is is a mystery to you. Yeah, am I right on that? Well, yeah, yeah, and you know we have so the people that got on that raft. To continue with that, I mean, they were pro. They none of them went on there, you know, with thinking, "Oh, I like to eat people. That's what I'm going to do." I mean, they were all they. They were very moral people, I'm sure, and they 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 had their belief systems, and they wanted to be kind to other people more or less. Some of them might have been, you know, kind of shady or whatever, but you know, they, there there was a line they never thought they would cross. But then, when the biological imperative really took over they did they crossed that line well yeah I, I, I mean it's one thing hunger is the best sauce I speak from experience yeah. there not necessarily yeah. candle but hunger is the best sauce yeah. and the reality of the situation is you know some, sometimes when you're putting when you're pushed into a corner you do rough you have to do some things to survive you never thought you'd da- you do Right, and so they go out there, and something happens, and 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 their whole system of beliefs and the way they see the world is just thrown out. I mean, it goes overboard. Oh yeah, the world, the world, the world. It like for all the the um, I like to believe that the world is actually a very magical place, but yeah. but the same token, it can be rough. It oh, can be oh, very oh, and, and oh. impossible to reconcile with what you believe about it sometimes well, well it's just it's just is i mean what what i mean i think the one of the biggest things about the world is it is what it is and you are in it and you're part of it and if you're going to want to survive you have to be willing to adapt to the circumstances in front of you and yeah. and not and not all the ways these circumstances are are palatable or there are necessarily things that you I mean, heck, even just more philosophic, philosophically, um, the human condition is constantly changing, right? And what's possible today, compared to what, you know, what was possible 20 years ago, is a completely yeah. different thing, right? So, I mean, you could be you could be stuck in the mud about some things, and there are things you don't necessarily have to do to be a part of it. That's true, but on the same token, it isn't going to change the fact that these things are there. Right, and they're going to be there tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after, and you as a human being have to have to come to terms with the fact that there are things bigger than you, right? And that's yeah. just the way it is. Am I? Does am I making sense? I, I see where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just the nature of the thing of the world. The world evolves, and I mean, we have. It's good to start with a system. Going back to something I said earlier, it's good to uh, to get started with. Um, but there are things that, that you accept that, pardon me here, Ugh. there are things that you have to accept that, um, don't necessarily fit your worldview. I mean, yeah. and that's just, that, that's just part of life too. I mean, you have to, you have to come to terms with the fact that, okay, I believe in God. There are lots of people that don't, yeah. right? Um, I could be like, we're all going to hell. I don't personally believe that, but, but that 
that all said, right? I mean, I could be very, very righteous about that, or I could just, I could just accept the fact that you know, you have your own thing, I have mine. The world is bigger than me or you. Truth is probably something bigger than me or you. Yeah. Let's let, let's live and let live and have a beer. Right. That's just well. It's probably you know whatever the ultimate truth is. It's probably literally beyond the the, the capacity of the human mind to comprehend it. Oh sure. I mean, lo- so there's you know you can sit there and beat your head against it, and you can come up with systems that work for you as a human being, but you're never going to understand exactly oh. what this is because you know you can't think in all the other dimensions that are out there. You know, you're kind of, we're kind of confined by our brains to, to what we can perceive, which is actually very little of what exists. Exactly. No, I mean that. That's just. I mean, I mean, you look at just in the world today, right? If you look look at just ha- like any kind of ecosystem, there are systems within systems, and the old wheels within wheels concept. That's very true. Yeah. It's very very true, right? It, it it's that is how the world works. It's not just one thing or two things or three things or four no it it's it's very um it's complex and that's just that's just a a bait any ecosystem you want to talk about it let alone human systems or or engine like just things we've built things we've seen i mean oh, oh yeah well, we i mean so as i've gotten when i was younger i was really really sure what was right and what was wrong as i get older i'm like you know I really don't have a fucking clue. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, and actually, that's that is maybe true horror. What happens next? If once you realize you don't know and it's bigger than you. Yeah. So there's your big thought for the morning. How was that? Well, that's it. You can go back to Lovecraft. A lot of the times, he would. Um not describe the monsters he would just say it was totally indescribable and I think that you know it's kind of has a broader meaning to it than just saying this thing is so ugly I can't tell you what it looked like I mean it's, it's something that that's incomprehensible and there it is and it basically has us in its power and we don't know what it is well that's that's the whole that's the whole point I mean that's what makes yeah. the horror terrifying it's not what we can see it's what we can't yeah yeah Right, the fear of the dark uh, ultimately is, and uh, just uh, you know, the the monsters, the creatures, the the demons, are really just metaphors for the totally ununderstandable, if that's a word. Well, it's for the fact that the world the world has its alienness to it. It's different. Yeah. It's not just it's not just about you, and yeah. that's that's a blow to the ego. Uh huh. <laughs> it just really is. So you still do? Well, we're set up, you know. To, I mean, all we know about the world is what we perceive. So for each individual, it is all about us, in a way. And then when you you reach the point where you realize there's something else out there that's not you, and will never be you, and you can't really do anything with it, that that's kind of scary. Well, yeah, that's 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 what makes, but that's what makes life interesting. Really, yeah, internalize that idea. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it knocks you off your off balance, and there you are. Well, well, yeah, and that's that's the whole point, though. Like, look, there comes a point where. So when I, was, I I've said this in one of my one of my stories. When I was a kid, when I started, I was afraid of being small. Yeah. And then the farther I go, the smaller I realize I am. Yeah. Right. But I'm no longer afraid of it anymore. It's just it's just the way it is. Right. I am a piece of a much, much larger whole I will never fully understand. And whether I'm here, and, and, and here's the truly, like, tragic part, right? I will come and I will go. Yeah. And in the long run, in the long run, I probably will not be remembered for a single thing I did. The impact I have will only be measured in the immediate people I know. Yeah. Right? And that's it. I mean... That's that's a, like in terms of impact, like long term. That's really small too. So I'm just here, and I'm just here to do my thing, and I've accepted this, and it's like, well, yeah, I can do what I want. And that's a cool freedom too. And you know, whatever impact you have on people, they're as fragile and temporary as you are, and 
eventually they'll all be gone, and then this planet will be gone, and then, you know, what what, what beyond that? Maybe we should have had some alcohol before this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so. Maybe, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe so. Maybe drive me to it, <laughs> Thinking yeah. about this stuff. Well, we, 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 this is where the conversation has gone. I mean, it's just, I, 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 I don't, I didn't plan this. <laughs> no, I'll it yeah. But, um, it's just, like, uh, I don't, I don't feel like that's a bad thing. I, it, it's. Well, no, I mean, everything is temporary. Now, that's the thing that, that I try to keep in mind. Everything is temporary. Everything changes. I'm temporary, you know. Everybody I know is temporary. Absolutely. Well, I'm not even the same person. Like, like when we last talk, I, 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 my teeth are fixed. Yeah. Right. That's a change. It's a big change. Um, oh, that's right. And that's just that's just in the last five years, within the last little bit. Uh-huh. Um, but it's true with everybody. Like we all go through our moments. Yeah. Right. We all go through our moments. We all go through our um, our possibilities and. We all grow in different ways, and hopefully, you know, we keep growing. Like my biggest fear isn't that. Uh, my biggest fear is perfection. Believe it or not. Yeah. Because if I, if I see I, what no, I see what you mean by that. Yeah. Yeah, because once I stop changing, I'm dead. I mean, that's yeah. that's, that's, that's how I see it. It's just just if I get to that point, I'm done. So. Yeah, perfection or or perceived perfection I mean if you think you're totally right and you're, there's nothing else to learn then you're, you're kind of screwed up then well, like, there are people like that and, oh yeah and I feel sorry for them like they're so. running the world now too well are they see I see here's well, the thing they're running you know parts of it they're, they're oh, oh, oh absolutely but I, I I have a theory about that and maybe this this is an optimistic one something you yeah. just said they're temporary yeah well yeah they are. They're very tender. Everything. Yeah. yeah. So this moment, this moment is tough. But at the same token, it's it's you gotta look at them from the perception. That, like I mean, if you look at them from the perception we've just talked about, then honestly, they're not really a big deal, right? Yeah. In the yeah. grand in the grand scheme of things. Um, if we think of them as big. So. Well, I mean, do we do do these people and us and you? around the world run it you know where there, there are more of them than us and they're most of them never even see a human being they're probably pretty content with what they're doing well yeah exactly i mean it, it's just it's just again there's just so many if you think about the whole wheels within meals concept right there's just so many things yeah. that, that we just will never fully grasp or understand and the world will still be here when we're gone right so yeah. whatever capacity it is in um so, you look at you so see you look at it from that perspective, and you have there is there's heart because um, because basically um, what I'm what I'm what I'm coming to is right in one sense um, I look at say the, what's going on currently, and I can think of it as a character on television. Now I can't be callous, right? Because I recognize the fact that they do have an impact on the world, and some of the things yeah. that, that they're doing need to be at least thought about a little bit better than what it is right now, and done something uh-huh. done about. But also, at the end of the day, their time will be up, yeah, just like everybody else's time will be up. And so, I mean, in one sense, you don't have to worry, or you don't have to let it get to you that there, that this is going on right now. Yeah. Because that time will come to an end. That's actually a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So there well, you go. There's cycles, yeah. Well, well. So there you go. So on the flip, on the flip side, my friend, look at it this way: the, the positivity to the wheels within wheels. Everything's time is up eventually. Yeah, everything gets a chance to to show itself. Yeah. Exactly. You're right, and that, I think that's that's a very um. What's the term? That's a very good way to look at things, I think. Yeah. And yeah. right, so that's what I've learned so far in the last few years. Right, I'm a different person than what I used to be. Um, uh-huh. Hopefully, a better one. I, I try to think I'm a better person. I hope I'm a more yeah. enlightened person, more open-minded. You know, keep trying new things. You know, that's that's the hope. That's my hope. 
How about you? You think you think you, you're a better per- you've tried you've tried to become a better person or I do actually I think I am in a lot of ways. So what what's the, what's your biggest difference? I have improved. Uh, well, I, I I am more mindful of people around me. I used to have you know problems with uh, my own ego and being kind of selfish, and I, I still have those problems. But I have really worked on those over the last few years, and uh, I, I think I'm I'm better for that. That's really cool. So you happier? Yeah. Yeah. I am. I get along a lot better. It's nice when you get older. You just realize, hey, what the hell was I fighting so hard for? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you hang on to these things for a long time. Well, I've been in therapy, so that's helped too. Oh, and uh, that's been a real, a real eye opener for me. I mean, I've really been getting into some things there from the past and so forth. If you don't mind me asking, I mean, if you don't want to answer, it's, it's your business. I totally get that. But what do you? What do you? What you? What made you seek this? Well, you know, I've had some problems for years, and uh, I think it all goes back to when I was very young. My mother died when I was really young, when I was about seven, and then when I was ten, my father killed himself. So, I obviously, I wound up having a lot of problems for that and didn't really address them for a long, long time. So, we've been getting into a lot of that my, with my therapist, and uh, it's, it's really done me a lot of good. I've been doing this for just for a few months, but um, it was kind of an outgrowth of me trying to improve myself, well, which I've been doing for ages now. Ah. And it's, it's been a really good thing for me. That's good. No, that's absolutely, no, that's, that's absolutely a great thing. Uh, learning new skills. I mean, obviously coming to peace with some things is a big step. I mean, trying anything new otherwise? Yeah, I mean, I'm getting out of my comfort zone, uh, uh, you know, that I've been in for a while and trying new things and, and meeting new people and doing some volunteer work and stuff like that. What are you volunteering for? With uh, animals. Oh, Wait, like... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I haven't actually started yet, but I've, I'm, uh, I have my application in to do some volunteer work at an animal shelter, which I'm looking forward to. Because I've always loved animals. And, uh, you want to do something about it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I totally get, I totally get that. Um, you know, I, I, I totally, totally, totally get that. That's, that's a huge step, man. And it sounds like you're on your way. So, with whoever you want to be. So, well, it's, it's changing, evolving. You know, I'm wanting to, to be better and feel better. And, you know, make people around me feel better if I can. So that's that's something I'm interested in. That's really good. So I guess I'm not, my my last my last thought. I mean, you're, you you seem like you're not, you're more at peace with yourself, which is a huge thing. Um, I guess what's yeah. the, what, what's the biggest thing you've learned in the last little bit? Oh, now that's a difficult question. I um, what is the biggest thing I have learned? Yeah. Let me think about that a second. I don't want to waste your time with a lot of dead air. But no, it's, it's okay. No, don't, don't worry about it. It's what the editing button for. I think it's more like, um, like, it's kind of like what you were talking about. Things are what they are, and you can accept them or not. I mean, you have to accept that things are what they are. You may not like it, but I think that's... That's one of the main things I learned. You do have to accept it. You have to kind of make friends with the fact that there are things you don't like and there are things you're not going to like. But but things are what they are and you are what you are within that continuum and you just do what you can do. And the thing is figuring that out. Yeah. But uh, I think what I've been doing and probably will continue to do for the rest of my life, I guess. Which, which is nothing wrong with that. Do you want I do you want me to be, be fair and tell you what the biggest thing I've learned? Yeah, go ahead. People do exactly what they want to do, no matter yeah. what. Well, th- yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I I once I hit that thought, I made a lot of peace with a lot of different things. Uh huh. And and I, now I'm like, all right. Now what I've done too, though, and it just annoys some people, is I've taken away the ability for them to make excuses. Uh huh. Which drives some people nuts, but that's okay. Yeah. I digress. But <laughs> you, know, you do exactly what you want to do at a given time, and hopefully, you know, I don't know 
is if it's just circumstances that make you start thinking differently. And, you know, I'm doing what I want to do, and I want to do things a little better than I've been doing them. And I don't know exactly how I arrived at that, but I'm, I'm grateful for it, however it managed to get into my head. That's not, it's not, it's a good, it's a good thought. And it always is a good thought, right? So, um, I wish you the best of luck. Keep going on this path, and, and by all means, when you, when you figure out life's mysteries, right? Yeah. Let, give me a shout. Let, uh, help, okay, help brother. Will, as soon as I get the answer. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta do it quick. Cause usually, usually once you get it, you only have a little bit of time on it. It's usually how these things go. It's yeah, like, no, it may take me a little bit longer, but I'll, I'll get to. I'll get with you whenever no, it, it comes to. Me. No worries. So what's so what's coming out next for you? Let's see what's coming out next. Uh, I have got, well, I'm working on some things. I don't really have anything scheduled at the moment. There, there is a Black Centipede novel that should be published at some point by Pro Se. I'm not sure what their schedule is. And then a Viona Vallis one, too. Um, I'm working on the third Bay Phantom novel for Airship 27. And beyond that, well, I'm working on a new coal shack, and again, there's another one where uh, I don't have any time frame for it. A third of the way done, I guess. So basically, things are things are in motion. It's just not quite there yet. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't have a whole lot popping now, but I got some things going on. So, so next year, 2020 is going to be the year the year of Chuck Miller. He's going to come out swinging. Well, that could be. I mean, yeah, maybe so. Yeah, well, hey, good luck, brother. I might run for president next year. I don't know. Why not? <laughs> Everybody else is. Yeah. I mean, oh, well, I, no, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Hey, listen. With the way it is down there right now, dude, you're probably better than 90 percent of the yeah, candidates yeah. out there. Right? <laughs> you can't possibly fuck it up more than they did. That's how I look. Well, at. I, I, yeah, that I would just not by doing nothing. I'd be yeah, exactly. That's the point. So, so, all right. In that case, what came out recently? How can people find you? Let's see. What is the le- well? I can be found on Amazon. I've got an Amazon page. Just look for Chuck Miller. I uh, there's a couple of other Chuck Millers, but I'm the one with the black centipede and everything else. And uh, oh, some Sherlock Holmes. I've done some Sherlock Holmes. Yes. Within the last couple of years and started work on a new one of those i have no idea you know where it's going to go or who it's going to be published by or if but it's it's one i'm working on set in the 1920s with a retired sherlock holmes who has to come out of retirement for, for a case nice nice and um what was that oh yeah i was rambling again uh yeah i can be found on amazon basically that gives you links to, to pretty much everything. That's cool, brother. Chuck Miller on Amazon. All right. One second here. And that was Chuck Miller, ladies and gentlemen. Chuck is always working on his his expanded universes. Uh, the Black Sun and Pete is definitely a great book. You should definitely check it out. It's a wonderful read. And I always dig uh, Chuck's take on celebrities and his book works and just his view on life is just really damn cool. Chuck, thanks for coming on my show. You are welcome back anytime. Can't wait to read your next book. Um, yeah, I have a lot of cool announcements I'm going to make um, starting here and now for the month of June. Uh, next week is the beginning of eight consecutive episodes of different two-parters. So I have four, ep- four, four, four interviews that have gone literally into two partners so i'm going to be interviewing each guest so each month each week will be a different spotlight on a different guest so we're gonna try something a little different for the month of june for the last two weeks in june the two spaces in june i should say uh we're gonna try to do something a little different as well beyond that um i'm the featured artist of the month for on the audio sorcerers website uh audio sorcerers is marnie young who's been on the show before uh, excellent narrator. She's doing some promotional stuff with me for the month of June. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more detail of that next week, but that's going to be really cool. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, Marnie, Marnie is someone I admire. She's one of the most enthusiastic people I see every time. She's active. She has a lot of great like product out there. You should definitely check her out. 
I have some new sponsors for the month of June already as well. I'll announce them both here. The Raven Podcast, courtesy of Jason Lavelle, is going to be one of my sponsors for the month of June. And Talina Winners is going to be my sponsor for the month of June. Talina is also one of the guests that I'm doing a two-parter with in the month of June. So it's going to be really cool to... Uh, do all that and i got more news i can't really reveal just yet but it's really cool to see some of the stuff i've been working towards start to really happen and i can't wait to have um more to come um i have a promise to keep i got a little bit of an stay of execution from breaking my word uh but i'll be working on that this weekend and i'll have more to announce on monday hopefully and that will do it for this episode of Just Joshing. If you want to support the podcast, you can do so a number of different ways. First and foremost, you can support each and every one of my sponsors. Go to bunderandpress.ca. Go to talk to Adam Dries' book signing next week, book launch, book signing. Uh, get his book, Five Critical Things, which is available now. You can do that. For me personally, you can subscribe to the podcast. Do it a number of different ways, whether it's Podomatic, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. I am on all those players and more. Subscribe to me, share my podcast, let people know I'm out there. That would be awesome. Um, thank you all for listening, by the way, who are listening right now. My YouTube channel is Joshua Pintoresco. My books, The Watcher, Storm Dancer, Wander- Wandering God, are courtesy of Miracle Publishing. The Watcher is on special for the rest of this month. Hurry up. you got about a week to go. Go to Miracle Publishing's website. You can actually get The Watcher for free right now. You should definitely go check it out. Uh, awesome, awesome book. I'm really proud of it to this day. Go for it. Beyond all that, um, yeah, I'll zero next week. Next week. All right. That'll do it. Stay inspired. Keep doing your thing. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Josh. Josh.